What's going on, y'all? Love and Hip Hop Atlanta Season 3. I forget what episode this shit is, but hey, it is what it is. Look like I'm going to be able to get this video out tonight. But, um, shit. Fuck it. <laughs> um, the episode starts off, okay, with Jocelyn, Stevie, Benzino, Althea, everybody going to meet up at um, this new barn bistro, Sleezo and B Zeno. Uh, little thing that they supposed to be putting up together. Okay, that's fine. You know Jocelyn had to take this opportunity to make it about her. This is about me. I'm going to be up on the stage dancing. I'm going to be singing. Shit, I got my own night. Fuck Althea. She want a night? Fuck that bitch. This is about me. I'm like, okay, whatever. So they go have a little conversation and talking about, you know, um, that's when I think somebody brought up the fact that, you know, uh, Carly Red used to date Benzino and Jocelyn was like, you know, keep your eye out on that bitch because that bitch is sneaky and, you know, she always starting some shit. I was like, okay, whatever. Then we get to um, Althea bringing up Mimi. Do you know Mimi? And this is what I went back from last week when I said most of the time, Jocelyn do not bring up Mimi. And the only time that she really do talk about Mimi is when somebody else bring her up. And this is one of those cases. Althea, you know damn well she know about Mimi, okay? And you know she know who fuck Mimi is. Yes, that's... that's you Don't tell me these bitches ain't never seen an episode of Love and Hip Hop, okay? Why are you on the show and you ain't never... Why is my hair sticking up like that? It's always this goddamn side. Anyway... Fuck it. Why are you acting so dumb? But, I mean, I guess play, play it for the camera. And, you know, um, Jocelyn was like, Mimi ain't allowed in her house. That's understandable. And, basically, you know, it is what it is. Kind of found out. Althea said that she used to date Nico. Or had a little thing with Nico. And, Jocelyn was like, I wonder how Mimi feel that uh, somebody got her leftovers or, you know, that she's somebody left or some shit like that. I don't know. And the whole thing about this leftover shit, how you going to call somebody leftovers when technically everybody is a goddamn leftover? Unless this is your first time dating somebody, period. Both of y'all dating each other for the first time and you ain't neither one of y'all dated anybody else. Everybody's a fucking leftover. That's how you fucking date. That's how a relationship goes. Come on now. that That's just stupid. That's supposed to be a fucking insult. I never understood that bitch. But, you know, it is what it is. Y'all in Atlanta, I guess, is a small little place. So, I don't know. Well, y'all circle is and y'all dated within circles. Let me tell you something. That just reminds me of when I was in high school. There was a clique in high school. They literally dated within their clique. So, everybody fucked everybody. Okay, I'm going to just leave that alone. But um, we move on from that shit. Benzino talking about something he in love with Althea and he want to marry her. Stevie was like, do you think you're moving too fast because they only been together for six months? And the same shit that you did with Carly, he was like, it's different. Carly was crazy as fuck, but you know, I'm still here for um Althea. Okay, that's fine. Whatever. Uh, Then we get to probably one of the saddest part of the damn episodes. Like, they just broke the episode down. And I do remember hearing about this, and it's just fucked up the way it happened. Um, Deb Abney's old, uh, youngest son committed suicide. He just couldn't handle. He couldn't handle a lot of things that was going on. Um, you know, he was losing his sight, and then all of a sudden, when Deb and Walker was getting famous or whatever, he felt like he was left behind or whatever. You know, in their shadow, and then he couldn't take. You know, what people were saying on the internet about the family and all that shit. And I, I truly do believe that he was depressed. And Deb was like, that was her, the one that would actually, oh, you beautiful. That was the one that she would, he would always be there for her. And she'd be looking out for him. And that was her baby, you know, her youngest. And I know her other son, another son of hers had passed away in a car accident, I believe. So, I can't even friend, I can't even, um... I joke about that because death and suicide especially is nothing to joke about. And it's obvious that he had some type of... He probably was depressed. He he had to been. But it was very sad. Walker didn't want to talk about it. And I understood that, you know, sometimes when shit goes on, you don't want to talk about it. You really don't. And you find a way to brush it under the rug and move on. But it's still there. And you really do need to talk about it so you can move on. So, you know, 
and then Tammy was trying to talk to her. And at one point, <laughs> the light, it was raining outside. And then it just thundered so damn loud. And like, Tammy got the fuck up and just left while... <laughs> <laughs> wow, Deb was in the middle of talking. I'm sitting here like, girl, let come on, sit back down and um let her vent to you or whatever. But you know, my condolences on that point. Um, Kurt and Rashida go to the doctor office with the baby, and basically Kurt feels a little bit vindicated because you know he told the doctor like, look, you know he snitched, told the doctor about you know people kissing the baby in the mouth, and you know the doctor did say that the baby. The immune system is not built all the way up, especially when it's a newborn. So, therefore, yeah, you can, the baby can get germs if you, you know, through that way or whatever and can get really sick and all that shit. So, nobody should do that. And, you know, he feels a little vindicated. And, um, he got the nerve to feel some type of way. And I want Rashida to go on her little trip with her girls talking about some this ain't the time. And, um, what about Carter? I'm like, ain't you the daddy? Ain't you the daddy? You went out and did your shit, so let her go out and have her fun. Come on now. Get out of here with that shit. Scrappy me know with Mama D. Mama D said, look at all this. Look at all this uh, royal shit. Fine ass. Now, which one gonna be, take the honor to have this ass sit upon it? I'm sitting here like, when it first came on, she was talking that pimp shit. So I'm like, who the fuck she talking to? I'm literally thinking that it's some bitches walking past with some big booties and all that shit. You know, no, she's talking about a fucking scooter. Okay, she's talking about a fucking scooter that she wants Scrappy to buy her. And Scrappy like, I was gone for two, I was gone for a week. Come back, come to find out my two girls get into a fight with each other. Mama all up in my business. Basically telling him, he basically told her, stay the fuck out of my business. If you stay out of my business, bitch. What the fuck did you think was going to happen by bringing them together? Stay out of my business, and then I'll buy you the goddamn school. Who gives a fuck? Um, <sighs> Young Jock. That's what I was going to say. I'm sorry. I, I literally paused because I was looking at something. Young Jock is in the club, and he on the mic. Singing some song. He got many uh, business. And I'm thinking that maybe they just doing the edited version. Because to me, that don't sound right. Sound like he meant he got many bitches. So, hmm. Okay. You know, if this was real, I would have said the whole damn real word. And Carly vibing to it. Everybody vibing to it. But did you notice that when he was doing his little performance in that little ass club, all them girls that was on the stage behind him, but your bitches over there? Right. And y'all supposed to be working on y'all issues and working on y'all relationship? Oh, okay. So, um, after that, um, she goes over, Jock goes over to her and yada, yada, yada. They kiss and they make it up and all that shit. Jock goes away to go do some interviews or whatever, drop some DJs and all that shit. Kurt comes over talking to Carly like, you know, um, you heard about Benzino and Stevie J opening up this stuff and you know Benzino got a new a new girl and all this shit and I see the way that you light up when you see Benzino and when you hear his name and she was like I still miss him I still want him a little bit you know we had some good times when it was good it was really good <laughs> girl look what you trying to do I'm sitting here like Kerr you are being I don't know if it was his intention to do this shit but this is why motherfuckers call that nigga gay because he start he's stirring the pot like a fucking queen oh my god come on now you literally, so you know he got a new boo thing, girl. That's all I was waiting for him to talk just like that. But that was basically him stirring the pot, trying to, you know, put some shit in her head, set it up basically for what's going to happen. So he's having an opening, uh, Stevie J and Benzino, for their new place. Everybody's there. Erica, I'm just confused as to how Carly Red and Erica Dixon became cool with each other to the point that they show up to events with each other and they got each other back. I maybe missed the episode or two, but, you know, somebody please enlighten me because I'm kind of lost. But, okay. I mean, whatever. They show up to Benzino place, and um, Althea is there, too, with him. And Carly feeling some type of way, like, you know, now I get to see his new bitch and all that shit and see if she looks better than me because, um, now can't nothing look better than this because I'm the best that he ever had. I hate when bitches say that because if you look better, that may be true. And if you was the best, why aren't you still with the motherfucker? Obviously, something wasn't right. 
Okay, so stop that bullshit. So, um... I see you finally got to meet. No, bitch, I've been met her. Anyway, excuse me. So, um, you know, they get to the club. <laughs> and let me just say this. Erica Dixon is just at atmosphere at this point. I don't even know why she's on here. I forgot all about her. I forgot that she was on this show until this episode right here. When they get to the club, um, Benzino brings his girl over there to Carly. Okay, they talking. Uh, Althea, like, did you change the numbers? Do she got your number? She was like, I got all his numbers. She was like, it's only one. Althea was like, babe, you know, you changed your number. That was the whole reason why to change your number. So everybody got to go through me. I get where she coming from, but Benzino, you in a new relationship. Why your old bitch got your number? I'm just saying, if you're going to change it, let that shit die and move the fuck on. You talking about marriage and shit, let it go. So next thing you know... Althea was feeling some type of way. Carly giving off um, uh, little shady energy. Althea giving off shady energy. And next thing you know, Althea goes, didn't you say that you were still on his dick? Or you still wanted his dick or something like that? She was like, what you said? Oh, who told you that? Well, Kurt said, Benzino, come over there. Well, Kurt told me some shit like that. Well, Kurt, bring your ass over here. And Kurt spilled all the beans and said that basically he did say that. So next thing you know. Carly and Althea go back and forth. And next thing, out of nowhere, Althea throws the damn drink on Carly. I'm ready for a fight to happen. Ain't no fight happening. Carly threw her drink on him, me on her. And then they broke that shit up. And as soon as she threw that drink, they dragged Carly ass out. Benzino, get that bitch out of my club. Get that bitch out of my club. Erica Dixon, bitch, you over there. I'm, I'm confused as to how you got involved and well, who you talking about some... She just had to open up her mouth. Who are you calling the bitch? Who are you talking to me? Are you talking? No, bitch. She talking to Carly. Okay, we all know he was talking to Carly. Then you want to get up there and get in his face. What the fuck are you going to do? That's why Althea threw that damn drink on your ass. Okay, now you want to make yourself known because you're only relevant when we're talking about Scrappy. Other than that, we truly don't give a fuck. Because I, like I said, I forget that she was on this goddamn show. Thinking of Scrappy, he go, um... Carly Red, just wait till my man get you. Wait till this ain't over, this ain't over. Wait till Jack put them hands on you. I'm like, fuck, why are you so... See, this is what I understand. If you in a relationship with somebody, your ex is in a relationship with somebody, what is the issue? Let it go, okay? So, we got Scrappy meeting up with Bambi, and Bambi basically like, I'm over it, I'm done with you. And he talking about some, uh, you too whiny, you complain too much. Basically, they just over each other. And when he was trying to pay for that money, <laughs> pay for that fool, when she, uh, grabbed that money out of his hand, and she told him, why don't you just go ahead over there and sip on a nipple? You want to put a nipple on top of that, um, bottle on, on your drink so you can suck on it better? I said, you better call that motherfucker out. That shit was so funny to me. But, um, yeah, just let that shit go. So, it's um, Nico and Mimi's anniversary party, right? You got Don up on the mic introducing them. Nico comes up on the stage and he like, yeah, you know, we the power couple. And uh, the porn take on drop on this day. And, you know, we doing this porn and we doing this porn. And I'm sitting here like, I thought this, is this a porn release party or your anniversary? Mimi sitting there thinking the same goddamn thing. I was like, wait, man, for the first time we on the same fucking page. Then we have Benzino and Althea getting ready. Althea did say that she told Benzino about her relationship with Nico. Benzino said he not pressed about it, but he don't want to go to the party. He like, how the fuck did I get invited? I'm still trying to wonder how we got invited. Because, you know, Nico want um, Bino, uh, Benzino Hip Hop Weekly to, you know, cover the party. And he like, fuck this shit. I ain't going. How long ago was it that you fucked this nigga? She was like, that was my past. Like, when I was in, I was 16, 17 years old. We in high school and all this shit. And I'm sitting here like, well, if it was that long ago, let that shit go and move on. Because, you know, you say you don't care, but you do care. All your actions are saying that. And so, of course, they send a text to um, um, Mimi or, or Don, to Don, saying that they not going to be able to come. And then... Don takes it upon herself to tell me, me, and, um, you know, Nico. And, of course, Erica Dixon is there, too, all of a sudden. She just be popping up. 
in this episode, she's just popping up. You know, she she's atmosphere. That's what atmosphere does. So she was like, um, they not coming. And Nico basically was like, yeah, you know, she banged him doing Benzino now and had a thing with um, Stevie J. And I'm sitting here like, wait a minute. Er, here go Erica. Wait a minute, so she loving the crew? That's what y'all do? And I was like, girl, shut up. You ain't got no other business. You know, she just irking me this time. I like Erica, but you're irking me because you serve no purpose on this show right about now. But um, she was like, wait till I tell Carly all this shit. Girl, you won't do nothing but gossip right about now. That's what you have become. That's how what you sunk to is to be just a gossip. Okay, so basically... You know, Nico was like, she's still hitting her up, um, still hitting him up. Well, her, whatever the fuck you want to call him. Still hitting him up, trying to um, claim that she wants some music or whatever. But it, it did sound and it felt like it was more Mimi like, what the fuck you talking about? She's still talking to you. It was like, one day I come over the house to pick up Ava and I ring the doorbell and all the lights and stuff is out. And then, you know, I come down, they come down. And Ava calling her by her first name like she done been there before already. I was like, damn. So, you know, out there done fucked your boy, you know, her boy's friend. I mean, it is what it is. Why y'all acting surprised? How many of them done fucked each other? Come on now, let's fuck, let's, let's stop playing this dumb, bro. Then we get... <laughs> Stevie, not Stevie, but Carly and um Jocelyn meeting up together. And I'm thinking, I thought Carly and Jocelyn weren't even friends. And, you know, I thought, you know, after she told out there, you know, you better be uh, watchful of Carly because she's sneaky and all this shit. So you sitting down there getting some gossip from Carly, you know, because you don't like Althea. You already thought that Althea was something was kind of funny about her. And then, you know, you spilling Carly tea. Carly spilling Althea's mess to her. Then you got, you know, um... Carly spilling Benzino mess and then you got uh telling her what happened at the party and all that stuff and I'm just sitting here like y'all are just ratchet. Then she's talking about her relationship with young Jock and how she um the the girl that was hanging on and then how she put her phone in his car and she uh put that find my phone locator on and found out exactly where he was and then Jocelyn, uh, Jocelyn basically like you know some of the shit that Stevie is doing making her think otherwise that he's still out there fucking around so now she, he gotta go check on that then you got you know Deb at the radio station putting out this um uh, no RIP and it's um what was it standing for no something internet posting, you know, if y'all remember, put it down in the comments. It's a good idea. Basically, stop all this dumbass shit and, you know, um, internet bullying. It's against internet bullying. And she, she did it for her son and talking about some people were saying that, you know, they was in the Illuminati and then making fun of him because he talked about he was albino and talking about that he was adopted and shit like that. And I just felt bad. You know, she couldn't even finish the interview. Um, and after that, this? After that, you know, Jocelyn meet up with Stevie J and basically told him she's over it because I look in your phone and you got you got titties and asses all up in your phone and you talk about some fucking wedding. No, no, I don't want that. I was like, okay, Jocelyn, what the fuck do you want? I'm 27 years old and I can get whatever I want and I don't need you. He was like, yeah, okay. Stevie was not faced by Jocelyn. Bitch, next week, next week is going to be some mess. We're going to find out. We may find out the truth whether or not Nico uh, leaked that sex tape because Mimi going to ask him that. But what pissed me the fuck off on that preview, what pissed me off was when Charlene, Rashida's mama, went to kiss that baby and the way Kurt uh-uh, moved back. I said, wait a minute, you don't do that. I don't give a fuck what type of problems you got with somebody, but you do not do that. She was, she could have turned around and knocked the shit out of him because of the way that he did it. But, you know, that was just loving hip hop. Y'all tell me how y'all feel about it, and um, I'll see y'all later. Peace. Look, I'm about to go down to Atlanta anyway, so, like I said in the other review, um, some of the other reviews may be up during the week. If not, if whatever that, on Tuesday or Wednesday, they usually be up and it's not up, 
it's probably going to be up on Friday or Saturday. So don't need to worry. I'm about to be on vacation. So it is what it is. Peace.